All right, now after having completed this solution of paper one, we are here to discuss paper two of JE Advanced 2018 Physics. We'll not be having any code because we are discussing the paper which was conducted in computer, so it was a CBT mode. Two days after the examination, JE had released the question online, and on the basis of that data, we are here to solve. In section A, there are six questions with more than one options correct. And there is a partial marking as well as negative marking. I would not be going into the marking scheme. Rather, I'll directly concentrate on this question where there is more than one option correct. A particle of mass m is initially at rest at the origin, is subjected to a force, and starts moving along x-axis. And you could see the kinetic energy is there, and the kinetic energy changes with time in this given manner. And we need to see the force applied on the particle is constant, speed, and all those things. Let's try to see the option. The option says, talk about the force, whether it's constant or variable, speed, and the distance and the conservative or non-conservativeness, right? So the solution here, we'll first talk about the force. Now here, what I get is say, dk by dt is gamma times t. That is what it's been said according to the first statement here. Rate of change of kinetic energy is gamma times t. Now let me put the value. I'll be getting 1 half m v square d by dt is equal to gamma times t and this will give me m v dv by dt so that will be equals to gamma t times dt that was a straightforward one right this will be 2v dv by dt so that dt would come there that 2 would get cancelled and at t is 0, the speed is 0. So solving this would be very simple. mv square is gamma times t square. In other words, you could see that v is directly proportional to t. Well, if the speed is directly proportional to t, that means the acceleration has to be constant. And if acceleration is constant, quite obviously, the force has to be constant. By the way, the speed is proportional to time. That is quite obvious. Distance will vary linearly with time. That's wrong. Because if the acceleration is constant, distance will vary parabolically with time. So we'll not be choosing option C. And yes, option D is correct. The force is conservative. Because if a force is constant, it must be conservative. Well, if a force is conservative, there are multiple ways how a force can be conservative. But one of the possible ways is when the force is constant. So therefore, for question number one, the first question of paper two, option number A, option number B, and D are the correct option. Right then, let's move to question number two. Question number two, from properties of bulk matter, and a bit, a bit unexpected from viscosity, right? So here, Consider a thin square plate floating on a viscous liquid in a large tank. The height h of the liquid in the tank is much, much less than the width of the tank. And the floating plate is pulled horizontally with a constant velocity u0. So it is something like this. If I'll draw the picture, the picture would be something like this. The plate is there, and here is the liquid, the shaded one is the liquid. So this is the liquid. And the liquid column is of, you know, length or depth or height, whatsoever you say, of h height is the liquid column, which is very, very small. And this plate has been pulled with a constant speed. Let's see. Yes, it has been pulled with a constant speed. u naught is there. So this is u naught. Now, according to the concept of viscosity, you know, the layer of liquid which is in immediate contact with this cross section will have a velocity u0, and the lowermost layer will have a velocity zero. Yes, the layer which is in immediate contact with the plate is u0, and the lowermost layer which is in contact with the ground, the floor, the speed would be zero. So let's see. 
the resistive force of the liquid on the plate is inversely proportional to H. I think that's fine because F is eta A dV by dy and this dV will be V0 minus 0 and this dy would be H. So therefore, option number A stands correct. Resistive force of the liquid on the plate is independent of the area of the plate. Oh, that's not correct because the resistive force depends on the area. The tangential stress on the floor of the tank increases with U0. That's fine because you see, if you consider this particular layer, this has a velocity U0, this has velocity 0. So that viscous force can be or is manifested in the form of shearing stress. So you could see it increases with U0. That's fine, see. And the tangential stress on the plate varies linearly with the viscosity of the liquid. That's fine. So for question number 2, option A, C, and D are the correct one. Should we move to question number 3?